Welcome to New York's number two sports show. The New York Rangers defeat the Detroit Red Wings 4-1 to one at Madison Square Garden. A nice bounce back performance from the Rangers uh, after, you know, again, a sloppy sort of back and forth sort of game against Utah. The Rangers, you know, win against Detroit. And what is a home and home? So the first game at MSG, second game will be in Detroit on Thursday night. But this game felt more similar to a game that maybe we would have seen last season where, you know, it wasn't necessarily a full 60 minute performance, but they, they were able to have the lead at the end of two. And it was a pretty good third period after what was not a great second period. I thought that Igor Shosturkin was the star of this game, even though he was actually the third star of the game and uh, ended up being Zabanajad one, Panarin two, Shosturkin three. I thought Igor was the backbone here. Um, and really made some pretty big saves, especially in that second period. Uh, but yeah, you know, you get a power play goal. So power play makes their contribution. Penalty kill was really excellent as well. They were perfect on the night. So, you know, look, the Rangers, they are a better team than Detroit. And they showed that. But look, like this could have went in a different direction. Absolutely. And it was the one goal Detroit score was actually with like a second left in the first period where the Rangers kind of had a little bit of a breakdown and kind of just almost stopped playing a little bit uh, at the end of that first. But Igor, who I wasn't totally sure, uh, it was the thing I was thinking about as far as whether he'd get the start, but he did. I would definitely expect Jonathan Quick to make his uh, debut this season at Detroit. That that would seem to make sense to me. And then go back to Igor in Toronto on Saturday. That just seems logical, especially because Igor has actually had success there as well. But uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, Igor, who look, he gave up six goals, even though I didn't think he played all that badly the previous game, but for him, like, you know, he's going to give you that response. And then as well, look, Mika Zibanejad, who I was very um, displeased with to say the least uh, after last game, he does end up with a goal and two assists. Now, granted the goal was an empty net goal, and, you know, he was involved on both assists. It was a better game for him. I didn't think it was a great game for him by any means. I'm just saying that, like, I I would have been a little bit more praiseworthy if I felt like, I think the stats there don't exactly translate to the reality. But at the same time, you know, does make a nice pass on the Crider power play goal and does win the faceoff uh, on Riley Smith's First goal is a Ranger. So, you know, those were two primary assists, to be fair to Mika. So he definitely deserves, um, you know, more than mention. But Artemi Panarin, I felt like in terms of just noticeability and creativity, I think he was the Rangers' best forward. Uh, he recorded three assists. And look, for him, that is misleading as well. Really, the the best assist was on the, the first goal by Alexi Lafreniere. The other two... Um, you know, one of them was a secondary assist on the power play goal. The other one was a primary on the empty net goal. So it's not even so much the points, but we know Panarin racks them up. And already, what what is Artemi at? Like seven points? I think he's at seven points through three games. So, you know, it's very early, but it seems like he's on his way to just putting up some crazy numbers as we're pretty much accustomed to seeing from him in the regular season. But, yeah, just a much more... Um, structured win and game by the Rangers uh, than certainly what we saw in the home opener against Utah. They did make one lineup change, Johnny Bradzinski in and Matt Rempe out. So that's probably going to be sort of a continuous sort of uh, changing as far as the forwards are concerned. Although when Jimmy Vesey comes back, whether it be, I don't know, early, I guess early November would seem most logical when it, when it comes to VZ. Like at that point, I guess a lot can happen from now and then. Um, but it does seem like Rempe is kind of that odd man out. And like, if that's going to be the case, he honestly may as well play in Hartford. Like for his like progression uh, in the league, I, I feel like this role he has, it's not really ideal for his development. So look, I, I think that Brodzinski is going to be back in there. Uh, in Detroit. I, I definitely believe that. I think that Rempe, everything being equal, he is that odd man out right now. And if that's going to continue and linger on, he's going to get the every odd game in. 
it might just make sense to send him down and have more of a veteran fill that ha- that healthy scratch role. Just kind of how I see it. But I, I think there is promise in the sense of like the Edstrom Carrick combo, at least, and and, and Brodzinski as well. Like not not to take anything away from him, but I think there's a little bit of the foundation. I hope that Adam Edstrom. I wish he would get more opportunity. He did not really get much ice time in this game, which I don't really like. He ended, and I know that this is another game that you did have, you know, a decent amount of penalties taken, which kind of throws things off, but only seven minutes and 32 seconds for another young player that I just think, I, I think that Lavia should try if he can to roll four lines, especially at this part of the season. Look, of course, I want the Rangers to win games. And by doing that, you're going to play more of the top players. But I think that evaluation could prove beneficial in the long run. So I, I would like to see that maybe happen a little bit more. Carrick does get his minutes mainly by the fact that they trust him as a penalty killer. And it does seem like as well, he has sort of a mini Barkley Goodrow role where I noticed, and I got to pay more attention to it moving forward. It seems like he is out there in late game situations, like when the Rangers are protecting a lead. Like, for example, like instead of a lot, like, and I, I don't, I can't say with certainty, but I think I noticed it where Carrick might have been on, like, instead of Lafreniere. Now that might have been actually though, but it it is still relevant, like for face off reasons. And, and so maybe if maybe Lafreniere would have replaced him, but it, it, again, it's something to take note of. And and look, I think so far he's actually looked pretty competent. Um, for someone who I, I haven't seen a whole lot of his games, someone that's really been more in the Western Conference now for a while, but so far so good for him. And as far as the defense is concerned, the same, they went with the same pairs. Um, a lot of like, look, not a whole lot of Victor Mancini, but also not nothing. He played more than 13 minutes, which is, you know, it, would you want to see a little bit more? Yeah, but you know, it's not surprising. But I think that Mancini's held his own. Thought Zach Jones looked pretty decent, although a little bit of soft coverage on that one goal by the Red Wings at the end of the first period, which we'll talk about. But yeah, again, I'm totally fine with them going with this for now. I think Ryan Lindgren is probably not too far away. I would think that Lindgren, we'll see him, and this is a very broad guess, but I think within a week or two tops, um, two weeks kind of being a total maximum, I think that Ryan Lindgren We'll be back in the lineup. And, and the unfortunate thing is Mancini is probably the one that will lose out. But I suppose, I do suppose that Zach Jones would be at risk as well. Either way, though, like, I, I think that that Lingering coming back is probably going to lead to us seeing some of the pairs that we're more accustomed to seeing. So I don't know if this is, this might be short-lived. But all we can do is take it day by day, game by game. So uh, in this one, I thought that, I don't know, first period, it, it was it was better for the Rangers in the fact that it wasn't so much high event hockey. Uh, they, they were kind of limiting the scoring chances. Were they getting a whole lot you know, of opportunity themselves? Maybe not so much. But um, either way, the Rangers take an early penalty. Lafreniere, high sticks, Dylan Larkin. Also, I want to say... I thought Eric Gustafson was going to make his, um, you know, MSG return after spending one season with the Rangers last year, but he was actually a healthy scratch. So um, kind of that, that's kind of ironic in the way that he was rarely, if ever, a healthy scratch last season for a team in the Rangers that made it to the Eastern Conference final. And Zach Jones kind of, you know, maybe deserved some opportunity and didn't. And on this Detroit team, that does, I mean, look, like they have some good defensemen. Gustafson was out the scratch, but maybe we see him uh, in that second game of the, uh, of the home and home. So Lafreniere high sticking penalty, then most Sider interferes with Zibanejad. So nice job by Zibanejad drawing that penalty and ending that power play. So it was four on four for a bit. That expires, and then the Rangers take the lead. It is a goal by Alexi Lafreniere, his second goal of the season, assisted by Panarin and Zach Jones at 11.45. So Jones, you know, makes the easy play over to Panarin and Panarin really makes it happen. Goes in the zone, finds some space. And then it's a one-time snapshot by Lafreniere. Goes in five hole past uh, goalie Alex Lyon. So, you know, again, like Lafreniere, there's so much confidence um, with him. You like in terms of goal scoring ability, creativity, like 
it, it's exciting. And, and the shame continues to be that he doesn't get number one power play time. And so maybe that ends up proving to be a good thing when he gets that contract this off season in terms of his points, not being crazy, but at the same time, as a fan of him, it's like, he's truly capable of being someone that can put up like 80 points. Whereas if he doesn't get that opportunity, you might be looking more like sick. Like where here's what I'll say. If he was on the number one power play unit, 80, 90 points is well within the range of possibilities. Without that, it might be more 60, 70, but the eye test tells you like, this is someone that is just getting better and better. Then the Rangers do get a power play at 1244. Austin Watson hooks Philip Heedle. Rangers don't score on that. And then just a defensive lapse at the end of the period where Dylan Larkin scores with uh, two seconds left. Really, it was closer to one second. At 1958, Larkin scores his second of the season from Justin Hall and Patrick Kane. So former Ranger Kane on the Red Wings gets the assist there. Really, uh, that Trocheck line, like I continue to say, it's the best offensive line, but it is not so strong in the defensive zone. Um, a little bit of puck watching by Lafreniere and Panarin there. Uh, Zach Jones, I felt like, could have maybe been a little bit stronger and a little bit closer to whoever it was on the Red Wings. You know, again, like Larkin can't be open in the middle of the ice like that. Nothing York could really do. And so, yeah, that was the one not the one negative, but the one play that ended up in the back of the Rangers net and it was avoidable and it happened at the end of the first period. So it's one, one into one. We go to the second period. I thought Detroit looked like the better team in, in period two, yet the Rangers end up outscoring them one, nothing in that period. Chris Kreider hooks Alex to bring it at two twenty three. Rangers kill it off at five twenty six. Ben Sherratt hooks uh, Artemi Panarin. Rangers don't score a power play there. Then Brodzinski hooks Lucas Raymond at 23. Rangers call that one off. And then the Rangers do score at 1656, uh, 1657, Justin Hall high six, Adam Edstrom. And so there you go. Edstrom draws that power play and the Rangers score on it. Chris Kreider scores his third goal of the season from Zabana, Jan, and Panarin at 17.05 of the second. That would be the game winning goal. And, um, you know, that was a, a nice connection from Zabana, Jan, to Kreider. Kreider's so good at the tip and in front. It, it, it's one of the strongest parts of his game. And, and Mika with a nice play there to get it to him. Um, and it makes it two on Rangers. And they would have that lead going into the third. And they would extend it, which was important. Um, but actually, there was a failed power play before that. Alex Lyons called for delay a game. Rangers don't score on it. And then off of a one faceoff by Zibanejad, Riley Smith scores his first Ranger goal. Um, at 4:51, just a night, you know, wins the faceoff. Smith steps into it in the slot and just rips it uh, by by Lyons. So um, you like what the, the versatility that Riley Smith provides is very encouraging. The fact that he he can kill penalties, he's on that second power play unit. Like this is someone that I don't think he's gonna wow Ranger fans, but I'm hoping when it's all said and done, because this has been a revolving door of this spot with Savannah Jett and Kreider. I'm hoping that he can take it and run with it. It would make this team so much better. So that makes it 3-1. And I, I, I like the third pair from the Rangers. Look, Igor made some really big saves along the way. Uh, ones that I'm not mentioning. Like, he he really uh, was very dialed in. And Mika Savannah this was a bad play. Savannah takes a penalty at 8.07. He trips Lucas Raymond. And the call may not have been the best one, but it was a turnover by the, by Mika that kind of necessitated it. Raymond was kind of already on his way down, but I get why the ref called it. And again, just not a great play by Mika, but the Rangers do get the job done. No goal for the Red Wings on their power play. Rangers are four for four on the kill. And then they seal it with an empty net goal at 1838. And Zabana Jad, it's his first goal of the season. It's an empty net goal. Maybe it can kind of bring about some confidence in him. And Panarin and Shruba get the assists. Rangers win by a final score of 4-1, to one, improving their record to 2-0-1. And, and now they will go on the road to take on Detroit again for this back end of the home-and-home. Home. Then a couple nights later, they'll go to Toronto, which should be an interesting game Saturday night at the Maple Leafs. Uh, before they, and actually, they'll stay in Canada as they will face the Montreal Canadiens um on Tuesday the 22nd and then they'll come home uh to face the Panthers in an Eastern Conference final rematch. So uh, a three game road trip commences in the Canadian I mean Detroit and Canadian realm uh against Toronto and Montreal. So uh three matchups uh within well actually if you include the Panther matchup 
actually four straight matchups against the Atlantic division for the New York Rangers. So again, um, a solid win on home ice for the Rangers. Uh, Zabanajad line kind of gets going a little bit. Hopefully that can lead to some momentum. Panarin looking really good early. Uh, and Igor Shesterkin, who will be a talking point for a majority of the season. Again, with him being an unrestricted free agent, he delivers a 31 save performance to help the Rangers defeat the Red Wings.